Now, you've heard me mention a number of times that instead of deploying a secondary site for branch office locations, we may want to consider just using a distribution point. Now, we have more flexibility now with our distribution points. We have the flexibility of handling network throttling across uh, networks, and we can handle it separately for each distribution point. We have the ability on distribution points now to uh, schedule when packages can be transferred across the, the wide area network to those distribution points that, that might live in branch locations. So what that does is it opens up an opportunity now for us to have more and better control over what we're doing in each of these locations. So let's take a look at a scenario where we have our main office in New York. Now remember that a main office has a site system or for our primary site connected into a database. And then we have many different clients that probably live in that main office area. And they have their management point, And they also have a series of distribution points that are probably local to them. So the clients connect into their local management point, And then when they need to retrieve something that is uh, of a heavy bandwidth download, typically application packages and uh, operating system deployment images and so on, they are configured to retrieve them from their local distribution points. And the downloading can happen there on their local area network. We transfer files from the site system library or site system server to each distribution point in kind. Now that can be transferred and throttled, but if this is on the local area network, we're less concerned about the throttling. Now, let's take a scenario where I'm working in Dallas. And let's say that the WAN bandwidth, the connection point here between New York and Dallas, is not very good and not very reliable. So we don't have a very strong WAN. Our options are to deploy a secondary site. Now that would give me a site system server with its own database and all of the clients in this location, you know, let's say there's a thousand of them, they will report in to this site system. Now that site system includes a management point and a distribution point. And so we have protected the WAN bandwidth by giving a sort of all-inclusive site system server and management point and distribution point. All client-based communication can go right in there. Now it still includes a distribution point. So from the central site, primary site system, we still have to replicate on over information to the distribution point service or role running on that site system. But we control that and we throttle that bandwidth. But even when it comes to management point type activities, like client machines checking in in order to get their uh, policy information, get their advertisements, for them to report up and upload their inventory information and desired configuration management reports and so on, they can do that to their local management point that you have in a secondary site location. And then from there, things will get uploaded into the primary site database for centralized reporting. Now, let's consider a situation in Miami where we have WAN bandwidth here as well that we still want to protect, but we consider it maybe a little bit more reliable so that we don't need to deploy an entire um, secondary site and manage that with its own database and continued management. Instead, we are simply going to put a distribution point out there. And Miami will be essentially considered a part of the primary site that is in our main headquarters. So all of the clients that exist at this location, could be another thousand clients here, they all report in across the WAN to the management point in New York. So that's where they get their policy information downloaded and they upload their uh, inventory, etc., up to those management points. But that kind of communication is not that much traffic. Even with a thousand users, it's very small amounts of data that are being transferred back and forth. However, the heavy stuff that we want to control the bandwidth on is what goes to the distribution points. And from the, from the central site system here, the, uh, the primary site system, we can replicate those large packages to the distribution point. 
and we can do so by throttling the bandwidth and controlling the schedule of when that information goes out. Now part of what we have to do is define boundaries. Boundaries are network ranges or subnets that get associated and then ultimately assigned to a particular distribution point. So if I have a client machine that sits on that subnet, it has an IP address for that subnet, it is configured to get all of its large application packages from this distribution point. Therefore, some traffic in the end is going across to a management point back at the main office, but the heavy traffic is being downloaded by the clients from its local distribution point. Keep in mind that that distribution point could actually be just a Windows 7 machine. As long as it had enough hard drive space to hold the stuff, and we can set up an HTTP and bits file transfer connection point, then we can have what's called a protected distribution point. It's protected because it only, we can set it up such that it only is allowed to respond to clients that are on these boundaries. That way we don't accidentally end up with clients over in New York trying to download packages from a distribution point in Miami. So two different options, uh, but because of this flexibility now and control, bandwidth controls over when we can uh, transfer across the WAN, the large packages and images, uh, this is a, a much more desirable option for many of your branch locations instead of trying to deploy and manage a whole other secondary site and database.